All right, Kenny, this is the Nomad 3.0 kit installed in a 170 extended Sprinter 4x4. Here at Nomadic Cooling HQ3, Glendale, Arizona, to talk about electrical systems. Let's dive into this complete Victron electrical system. This is the Nomad 3.0 kit. If you go to nomadiccooling.com, you can look at this kit. Right now, currently, there is a Nomad 1, a Nomad 2, and a Nomad 3.0. It goes from less complex to more complex. This is the more complex of the kit. Further on in the future, there'll be 20 or 30 different kits located on nomadiccooling.com that you can easily go to, click on it, and it will be all the components that you need for your 12, 24, or 48 volt DC powered, DC and AC powered electrical system. I would tell you at the, the top of this that the install time for this, for somebody who's done it before, is about 80 to 110 hours. If this is your first time installing a system like this, Plan for that and plan for a little more. What I would like you to do before you install it is take the time to read all of the directions and the owner's manual for each one of these components before assembling the kit. It saves a lot of time and trouble later. This kit has two 330 amp hour batteries expandable up into four. So currently this sits with 660 amp hours of Victron power. This electrical system has an external BMS from Victron. Some of the advantages of using an external BMS, number one, if your BMS breaks, everything has the opportunity to break. If it does break, it is external from the batteries. The other thing that's nice about an external BMS is that you have the ability to make these 12 volt batteries 24 volts or 48 volts because they have a BMS that is outside of the battery. That's an advantage. Um, the actual BMS is actually in this, which is brand new, is the Link Smart BMS. We're going to come back to that. Let's jump over here, Kenny, to the Victron 3000 inverter, compact. This is the most common inverter that we sell over here at Nomadic Cooling because it, the height of it, the arrangement, the length and the width of it fits snugly and nice over your wheel well. The 2000 is only a few bucks cheaper, but what you don't get from that is you get a height differential. It's a lot skinnier and a lot taller. To control all of the batteries, the, the power in, the BMS, and then the power out, we're using a Victron Lynx distributor. We're also using a Lynx Smart BMS. This is pretty new into the market. And we are using another Lynx distributor for the power out. The first Lynx distributor can use up to four batteries. That means we have four separate places with fuses for the batteries. As an option, you can also use the Lynx Power In. The Lynx Power In is a little bit more affordable and you don't have to fuse them inside the Lynx distributor. There are also some advantages of that as well, but I do want to mention to you that at the top of the battery system on the positive side, we have terminal breakers here, um, fuses 300 amp hours right here at the top. So we have a fuse here currently in the system. We have a fuse also inside the Lynx distributor, which as I mentioned to you earlier, this can easily be switched out for a Lynx power in. Then it goes across over here to the Lynx BMS. The Lynx BMS has an electronic shunt that you can turn off with just the flip of a button. I'll show you that here in a second. And it also does your battery monitoring right here for the system. On the other side, we have the Lynx distributor. And the Lynx distributor on the back side of the batteries is routing all of your power out of the 
electrical system. So we have our AC, we have our 12 volt panel here. We also currently right here, I didn't mention it earlier, is we have the Blue Sea Power In 30 amp breaker. So this goes from shore power through the breaker on off into the inverter, power out of the inverter, comes right over here. We have three panels right over here, three different 15 amp fuses. Go ahead, turn that one off. I can turn it right back on. You wanna remember as a general rule that inside your vehicle, you wanna keep it as simple as possible. My particular van only has one 110 outlet in the middle of the van. Remember that in van life, Every time something does something for you, it simultaneously does something against you. So when you put plugs or outlets all around your van, it just adds to the complexity. The other thing it does, if you ever have to chase down a problem, it just makes it a little bit more complex because you may need to take your kitchen apart, you may need to take your bed apart, you may need to take wall panels apart just to get to the thing to find out where the problem is later. So let's assume that when you're building out your electrical system that you know what the plan is before you go ahead and do that. And remember, everything that can break will probably break somewhere down the line. So let's go ahead and plan for that as well. We also have a Victron 220 battery protect. Now what this will do is it will turn off your ability to use battery power based on low voltage or high voltage. So right here we're using that through the Blue C12 gang fuse box. This is being used for all of the smaller attributes through the vehicle as your fans um, portable outlets for your phone, uh, your refrigerator can also go through here. Currently, the air conditioner is being routed through the Lynx distributor as well. You can just as easily run your air conditioner through your battery protect to free up a spot within the Lynx distributor. This electrical system here inside this vehicle is probably all going to come out. This is just a rough fitting. Um, the reason it's going to come out is because this vehicle has not been built out yet. So this is all fitting, roughed in, it will come out, they will build out the vehicle, and then they will put this back in. So some of the wires, some of the wire lengths, they've all been left a little bit longer so that the, in, the, in the future, they have the ability to make them smaller if they wish. You can actually see that we have a Serbo GX installed. The Serbo GX is a one touch system that allows you to monitor everything remotely from anywhere in the world using Wi Fi. You can check your power of your system, whether your system's on. You can turn off the power of your system. You can turn off your inverter. You can check the uh, your water tank levels, your gray water tank levels. You can uh, check the temperatures inside your refrigerator. You can check the temperatures inside your van. You can check your gas tank levels from anywhere in the world right through your Serbo GX. It also gives you this super nice color touchscreen control that you can put almost anywhere within 10 feet. It may be even farther away from your battery system. It's very easy to use. All you can do is just swipe over. You'll see your AC inputs. You can see your AC loads, your DC system. You can see how much battery percentage is remaining. And then at the flick of a button, you can actually turn off your inverter. And that's gonna turn the light off here, Kenny. Ready? There you go. Okay, so we just turned it off. We're gonna go ahead and turn that back on now. We can do that all right here from the touch of a button. The other thing that this system allows you to do because we use the new Victron Smart BMS inside the Lynx distributor is it allows you to have a one touch button that you can put anywhere inside your rig to shut down the system if necessary at one touch of a button. I have a little tiny button over here and you can put this up at the front of the coach, in the back of the coach, under the coach. You can put it at your mom's house, Kenny. Kenny, I don't care where you put your button, but we'll go ahead and just flip that switch right now. Oh no, it didn't. oh, there it goes. Our whole system has shut down inside the Lynx, the Lynx Smart BMS. The Lynx Smart BMS is not allowing power through over to this side, and it's also turned off all of our communication networks within the, the Serbo GX as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the switch again to turn the power back on. 
and you'll see everything's kind of slowly start coming back to life. It's that simple with this new system. Some of these components are pretty new to the market. There's a lot of different options that you can go with. Over at Nomadic Cooling on their website, the only thing we're trying to accomplish there with the kits and putting them within a kit is so that you don't have to do all the research and planning for all of these components. We've already done that for you based on the complexity, based on the vehicle, and based on the budget that you're trying to accomplish. These are the 330 amp hour batteries. Most of our kits, we do recommend the 200 amp hour batteries, primarily because they're easier for us to ship. We always have them in stock. Smallest battery based on length, width, and height times amp hours, or divided by amp hours, however they do these things. The things are tiny. They're about the same size as the original Victron 100 amp hour battery. All of this is within the kit. If you have any questions about this electrical kit or any of the components within the kit, go ahead and give Nomadic Cooling a call today or drop us an email. The one thing I didn't mention earlier, Kenny, is this is all set up to the Nomadic Cooling Air Conditioner, the whole reason why we're here. We have the Nomadic Cooling Air Conditioner set up right here with two AWG wires up to the control panel hanging up here. You wanna remember whenever you're testing your air conditioner, what you don't want to do is touch the control board on the outside. By touching or breaking anything on this control board, you could break this control board and we'd have to send you a new one. But while you're testing it, you can have it hanging here and you can press the power on button. This is a great time to make sure that everything is working within your electrical system and within your air conditioner. If there's a problem, we're gonna find out what the problem of the electrical system is when it's pulling 100 amps out of the system, not when it's pulling five amps for a max fan. So right now the air conditioner is running. So right now the batteries are pretty low, but we're using 800 watts right now of power. I'll go ahead and put this right over here. We're using 65 amps, 824 watts right here. And we have cold air coming out of the air conditioner. We just turned the air conditioner on. It's 77 degrees in here, and it's already lowered down to 53 degrees coming out of the air conditioner. And that number will slowly start to decrease as the air conditioner starts to increase its efficiency and its cooling. So I'll go ahead and just tell you right now, we're still using 62 amps, 790 watts. And the air temperature coming out of the air conditioner, Kenny, is at 45 degrees. Getting that? Okay. Now, let's take a little look at, let's see here. So, Kenny, that's in eco mode. Can you get that that's in eco mode? Put a little arrow up there so they can see that's in eco. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to push the, oh, I'm going to push the cold button. And I'm going to put the thing onto high cool mode. Now, high cool mode, think of it like the six speed in your car. It's like afterburners. We don't want to use this all the time because it uses more power, but we do want to use it when we need things to get cold quick, and then we can put it back into eco mode. So right now, even in high cool mode, based on the fact that it's just not that cold in here right now, Kenny, we're still only using 50 amps of power. So 50 amps at 12 volts, we're at under 800 watts right now. And our temperature coming out of the air conditioner is at 47 degrees. Internal temperature right now is 77 degrees inside the vehicle. So we're getting a little less than you know, 30, 40 degree separation. It's pretty standard around here for a DC powered air conditioner. So Kenny, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. The other thing I wanna mention is that this vehicle, if you remember from an earlier video, we installed a secondary alternator in this vehicle to power this big lithium system. And so that is going inside the Lynx distributor as well. When this car is in idle, it is doing 150 amps of charging from the second alternator. We have a positive and a negative four aught wire from the second alternator back into the Lynx distributor. When we are driving down on the road on the highway, you're probably going to be at 250 to 275 amps an hour of charging. What does that mean? That means roughly speaking with 660 amp hours, we're going to be two to three hours of driving within the city and highway driving to charge these batteries from zero to 100%. 
Normally, you're only going to bring these batteries down to like, let's just say 50%. So you're only talking about an hour of driving to recharge these massive batteries. This is more than enough power that you'll probably need for most vehicles. If you're doing a dog transport vehicle, or if you have kids, uh, if you sleep for long periods of time, if you know you're going to be stuck in climates such as Arizona, Nevada, Utah, Texas in the summer, you may want to think about a larger battery bank just so you don't have to worry so much about running out of juice and sleeping for long periods of time inside your vehicle. You do want to remember that the air conditioner turns on and off based off the temperature inside the vehicle. So as it gets to the desired temperature, your, your compressor on time may not be 100%. It may be more like 50% of the time it will be on. On an 80 degree day, the compressor may only be on 25% of the time. The compressor runtime has everything to do with the external temperature, whether you're in daylight or if it's nighttime, if you're getting in direct sunlight or if you're sitting in the shade. That determines what your compressor on time so that you can calculate how many batteries you're going to need for your overland vehicle and for what you're looking to do with your overland lifestyle. Thank you for spending this time with me to go through this electrical system. The no, the no, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for taking the time to spend with me. Thank you for taking the time today that you spent with me. No. <laughs> that was too Mr. Rogers for me, Kenny. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching this video about the Nomad 3.0 kit over, from over here at Nomadic Cooling. If you're interested in anything that has to do with batteries or cold air technology, do me a favor. Just give us a call over here at Nomadic Cooling. I just want to go over this one more time. We originally just started selling cold air technology, the air conditioning. The reason we've moved into the batteries and the electrical is because we had so many problems with vans coming in where their electrical systems just weren't safe. They weren't safe enough for the customers that were in them. They weren't safe enough to keep their dogs, their cats, or their kids inside their vehicle. Safety is everything when you're dealing with complex electrical lithium systems inside a moving vehicle. And all I'm asking you to do out there is to put safety as one of the front things that you're trying to accomplish. I understand the fact that we all have limited budgets. Well, some of you out there do. Some of you have more money than know what to do with it. And God bless you. But all the other people, uh, the normal folk out there, limited amounts of money and you have to make decisions every day when you're building out this your rigs, what you're going to spend your money on, what you're not going to spend money, your money on. I'm only asking that for your electrical stuff, you don't just put price as the number one. You take a little bit of time and think about safety. The Victron kit may not be the kit for you. There's lots of different batteries out there. There's lots of different other components. But if you are going to spend money on anything, I'd like you to spend the money on the best breakers that you can find from a reputable company. That Those little things go a long way for your safety as you're traveling in your overland vehicle. Guys, if you guys want to go further in comfort, cooler, do me a favor, think of Nomadic Cooling and give us a call today.